Hello, I'm Helen Bradley. Welcome to this video tutorial. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can turn a photograph that you took today into something that looks like it was photographed a hundred years ago. Before we get started, let's look and see what it is that we're trying to do. This image was shot in 2008 in Siena, and this is what we're going to do with the image. We're going to make it look as if it was shot in the early 1900s. And we're doing this a few ways. Firstly, we need to choose the right photo to do it with, but then we're going to harness the power of Lightroom to create this effect with the image. The first thing I'm going to do is take my original image and make a virtual copy of it. To do that, I'll right click and choose Create Virtual Copy. Now all this does is create a second version of the image within Lightroom. So we're not actually duplicating files on disk, but it does mean that I would always have the original to come back to. Now the reason why I chose this particular image for this effect was that I was looking through my photos and I kind of liked this image. I really liked the buildings and the structure in the background, but the foreground was not doing anything for me at all. And as soon as I cropped the image, I sort of got the feel that maybe this was an old photo. And so that's why I looked for this sort of vintage effect to create using this photo. In the background here, there's very little that says 21st century and what little there is will be easy to remove. Of course, we don't want any of these people in the foreground because they really are way too modern for the look that we're going for. So for this kind of effect, I want an image that has some interesting things in it, and the building detail is quite interesting. The fact that the sky's blown out really doesn't worry me for this effect. So I'm going to start by cropping the image, and I'm going to choose a one-to-one -one crop because I think it would look quite nice cropped to that ratio. So I'm going to get rid of all my people in the foreground, well essentially all of my people in the foreground, and I'm also going to rotate the image a little bit. Rotating the image will allow me to get rid of a bit more of the sky, and will also allow me to focus in on the buildings that are of most interest to me. So I'm just going to move it across here a little bit, and I've lost my crop so let's just go in here and let's pull this crop in even a little bit tighter still. Now what I need to get rid of is some detail in here, but it should be relatively easy to get rid of that. So let's just click the Done button. I'm going to go in here and zoom in and see what it is that I have to remove. And I think I'm going to be pretty good if I just remove these two things here, the person and the truck. I'm using the Spot Removal tool, and that will be a good tool to remove the person. So I'm just going to grab the fix that Lightroom has given me and just find a better fix for it. Now I'm also having a look up in the top of the Spot Healing Brush tool to see what setting I've got here, Clone or Heal. And I can try each of these to see which one of them is going to give me the better result. And I actually think that clone might work better. No, nope, that was certainly a wrong choice. So let's go back, reselect the tool, reselect this pin, and let's go back to heal. Much better choice. Okay, I want the same tool over again, and I'm going to just brush over this little car here. Now in the process, I'm going to have to lose this pole, but I'm going to paint all the way over the pole because I think it might be easier to find a total replacement pole for that spot. Now Lightroom's tried, but I don't think it's found the best fix for this image. So I just want to move it so I can see everything here. And I think I'm going to go and try and borrow this pole instead of the previous one. Let's just see how that looks. Now this is not going to be a perfect match, but by the time we've damaged the rest of the image with this sort of vintage effect, I think that we won't notice what we've done here in the bottom corner. So I'm just going to go back here. I think I still have a little bit of fixing to do. So again, I'm getting my spot healing brush, and I'm just going to paint over a little bit of the cement here. And let's just go and find a little bit of sidewalk to replace this with. I'm thinking that bit there, and let's click Done. 
And I could continue and try and find some other little bits in the image to replace these areas with. I'm a little bit concerned here about the bottom of this pole, so I'm just going to paint over it and now and go and find a better fix for it. And again, click Done. I'm pretty happy with this again. As I said earlier, I don't think that we're going to see this as being a problem when we've finished off the rest of the image. What I am concerned with before we leave this fixing is this area here. I think there's somebody with a camera in their hand here. So I'm just going to paint them out. Taking care not to involve the pole in where I'm painting because if Lightroom does what it's done to me the last few times I've tried this fix, is it very kindly finds a fix from up here. And while it's got practically nothing to do with the area that we're trying to fix, it actually does really quite a good job. So I'm really quite happy with how that looks. And let's just go back out and see. And I really don't think that by the time we're finished, you're going to see or notice what's happening in this area of the image. So now let's go to the fixes that we want to apply to the image. And what I want to do is to build on this over exposed sky. And I'm going to kick the exposure up about half a stop. So I'm going towards about 0.5 here. And what I've done here is lightened the image quite a bit. And I've also ended up with a sort of foggy look to the image. So to build back what I've lost in contrast, I'm going to boost the contrast. And I'm just going to take it all the way up because I want some real contrast in these areas of the building because by the time I go to black and white, these are going to be important to add some sort of texture to the image. For my highlights, I'm going to head in a negative direction. So I'm going to bring down the highlights just a little bit. So I'm thinking down a little bit like about negative 25, something like that. But you may want to experiment with this on your own image just to see where it's best to take these settings. I'm going to take shadows up a little bit because I want to get a bit of detail out of the shadow area here. So I'm going to walk that up just a little bit to build back a little bit of the detail in this area here. For whites, again, I want to enhance the whites in this image. So I'm going to take this up. I'm just going to increase the whites quite a bit. Again, we're not worried about protecting pixels in this image. This is a vintage photo look. So we're quite happy if we're actually walking all over the pixels in this image and taking them in directions that typically we would not take them in. Now blacks, I want to see if I can get a little bit more black in the image. So again, I'm going to walk this down. I'm thinking something like about minus 19, minus 20 for the blacks. Now the next settings here, Clarity, Vibrance and Saturation, are going to help us give the crunch to the image. In fact, I'm not going to crunch this image. If I did, by adding positive clarity, you'll see that it gets a very crunchy look. I think that's too much. So I'm going to walk that in a negative direction just to soften the image a little bit, much as it might be if it were taken with a very old fashioned camera. And then I'm going to reduce saturation because this is going to be my way of getting the image to black and white. If I want a smidgen of color in it, then I could leave this at say minus 90 or something like that. And I'll have a little bit of color in it, but practically none at all. Now to add a sepia tone to the image, I'm going to tone the highlights. So I'm going into split toning here and we're going to find a color to apply. I'm just going to boost the saturation up here so that we can see the color or we could do that also by holding the Alt key as we drag on the hue slider and that will show us the colors that we're selecting here. So I'm going to find a color to use and I want it to be a slightly rich color. I think I want a little bit of sort of pink in here. So I'm thinking something like that that's got the slightest amount of yellowy pink in it will be good. And now I'm going to increase the saturation because that will apply the color to the image. And then we're going to adjust the balance. Now balance allows us to define where highlights are in the image. And I'm going to bring the balance right up so that most of the image has this color applied to it. 
And now I'm just going to finally tweak the color a little bit. Now to add to the vintage effect that we're going for here, I'm going to add some grain to the image and we do that in the effects panel. So I'm going to come down to grain and I'm going to crank up the amount of grain in the image and you can see that that immediately has a sort of aging effect on the photo. I can adjust the grain size and the roughness of the grain. I also think the image will be helped with a sort of vignette but whereas normally I might apply a darkening vignette, I think I'm going to apply a lightning one here. So I'm just going to grab the amount slider and this time I'm going in a positive direction and that just lightens the very edges of the image. Almost as if light has leaked in at the sides of the image. Now to finish off, if you were concerned that there were any detail in the foreground here that you really didn't want to have as sharp as it is, perhaps to reinforce the look of it being an old photo, you can use the graduated filter. I'm just going to drag in here at a slight angle now. It looks as if my graduated filter has an exposure adjustment setting on it. Just going to get it in position and just adjust it. I want to bring down the exposure here. I don't want it to apply an exposure adjustment, but I could get it to apply a slight softening so I could bring the clarity down in this area. Again, slightly making the front edge of this image a little bit fuzzy and again, blending in the people who may look a little bit too much like 2008 and not quite enough like they were shot in the 1900s. So from here there are other things that you could do. You might want to sharpen the edges or darken the contrast in the buildings here so you could run over them with an adjustment brush. I'm just going to increase the size of my adjustment brush here, turn auto mask on, make sure I'm using 100% flow and just go and drag over the very top edges of the buildings here. Now this is going to be creating a mask. Again, this brush has got an exposure adjustment in it. I'm not worried about that right now. All I'm worried about are the brush strokes across the top edge of this building. Let's go and show the mask overlay and you can see where the mask is. And so we can just work a little bit at perfecting that mask. And then having done that, let's turn the mask overlay off and let's just boost the contrast in that area. I'm bringing the exposure back so that this adjustment is not affecting exposure, but we could boost the contrast just a little bit. So let's have a look at the image that we started off with. This is the image as it was out of the camera, very much a poor shot taken in 2008. And here's the effect that we've been able to create, an image that looks as if it was shot in the 1900s. And it's all done using the tools that we have built in to Lightroom. I'm Helen Bradley. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. Look out for more video tutorials here on my YouTube channel and consider subscribing to my channel and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. And visit my website at projectwoman.com where you'll find more tips, tricks and tutorials on a range of applications including Photoshop, Lightroom, Illustrator and a whole lot more.